Today we're going to see how the scriptures present the ideal measurement of womanhood. And of course, it's not only for women, because it's very important for men to understand how they can help the women around to become the fullest woman that they can become, and also how the children can help their mothers to be the fullest women they can ever be. Heavenly Father, we pray for your message, that your message may address our questions, our needs, and our aspirations. Nawa Panginoon ay mangusap po kayo sa amin. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship you. Thank you for this place where we can worship in comfort. And we pray that you may descend upon us, that you may let your light shine before us in spite of who we are. Ipatawad mo nga, Panginoon, ng lahat ng aming mga kamalian, ng lahat ng aming po mga pagkukulang. Punan niyo po ng inyong pag-ibig. Hugasan niyo ng dugo ng iyong anak na si Jesus. At nang sa gayon, walang maging sagabal upang makita namin ang iyong kaliwanagan. Na hindi maging sagabal ng aming mga sarili at mga kakulangan upang kami ay mapagpala niyo, kami malapit sa inyo, at maging lalong kawangis ng iyong anak na si Jesus. We have gathered, Father, to hear you. So please be our speaker. We don't want to hear any human voice but yours, but use your servant as your footstool, as your channel. Mangusap po kayo, Panginoon, from your heart into our hearts. And let blessings flow through the throne of Jesus into our lives so that we can become blessings to others and we can become glorifying to you. So, Lord, silence us. May your peace reign upon us. We reject anything that will take our attention away from you and ask you, Speak to us. We have our own agenda for coming here. But we ask you now, let your agenda prevail. Let your will be done. And we seek you in Jesus' beautiful, mighty, and precious name. Let us read Proverbs 31. A very interesting rereading. Because many of us have already read this many times. Proverbs 31, verses 10 to 31. A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you have surpassed them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. And may the Lord give us immense blessing through this reading. Pag inisip natin, may ganun bang babae sa balat ng lupa? Narito kaya siya ngayon? What are the work of a virtuous woman? What are the various kinds of work that she does? 
Pag tinignan natin, mahirap kasing sundan itong Proverbs ng line for line dahil tumatalon yung mga idea. So they have to be reclustered. You know, Proverbs is an interesting uh, reading, especially this Proverbs 31. Beginning from verse 10 up to the end of the chapter, the first letters of each line actually uh, could be read vertically, meaning the excellent woman in the original language. Halimbawa, ang napakahusay na babae, ah, ganon. Tapos N, G, each letter actually started a line. But the letter could be read vertically if you were looking at the poem and see the excellent woman. But of course, that is lost to English readers and to the Tagalog readers, those that are not reading it in its original language. That was also a poetic device among many parts of the Bible. But in cultures where there is great tradition of orality, it also helped memory. In other words, kung meron akong ang dakilang babae, A is for this, N is for that, G is for that, D is for this, madaling matandaan yung tula. Pero dapat na tayo magtsaga sa English version dahil yun lang naman ang alam natin ngayon. At kahit doon sa Tagalog ay wala yun. But suffice to say that this is such an excellent treatise on an ideal woman. Ano ba ang turo ng Biblia kung ano dapat ang babae at pagkababae? Sapagat kung tutuusin, of course, uh, the Proverbs was part of the wisdom books. Ibig sabihin, all the readers and all the um, people who memorized and actually delivered these lines have always believed that they were divinely revealed. Yung mga truth dito. And it's important to assess our personality, especially the women can assess their personality, against these standards. Now, what were the kinds of work of the virtuous woman? First of all, we have seen her. And I'll go chronologically, but you want jump, jump, no? By topic. She selects wool and flax. Wool is a raw material for winter wear. And flax is a raw material for summer wear. In other words, namimili siya ng mga bagay na pwedeng ma-weave, mahabi, at nagahabi siya. And she works with eager hands. So this woman could weave, and she doesn't weave only in summers, she does so also in winters. So that both seasons, she has clothes not only for herself, for her family, but also clothes to sell. So that's one of the things that she do, we see her doing. Then she's also into profitable merchandising and business. So we like merchant ships, she brings her food from afar. The kitchen of this woman is well stacked. She's got spices from all over the world. Because she does trading, so nakakapagtinda siya ng mga bagay that gives her income para makabili siya ng mga bagay na galing sa malalayo. Like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. What else does she do? She considers a field. She's also into real estate. Titingnan niya ang isang bukid. Kung maganda, bibili niya. And she doesn't only go into buy and sell. She plants a vineyard. Agriculturist din siya. Siya ay farmer. Pumipili siya ng lupa. So may maganda to. O ibebenta ko ito. Ito, tataniman. And then she weaves and she also sows. She works on the spindle, she works on the staff. So marunong siyang maghabi at marunong ding magburda. Marunong manahi, marunong magsulsi. Ang damit ng asawa niya at mga anak, hindi tanggal-tanggal ang butones, hindi tas-tas-tas-tas ang gilid. And then, what does she do? She also is into merchandising and weaving of linen garments, the finest textile available in those times. And sashes. Ang galing naman ng babaeng ito. Weaver na, modista pa, bordadera pa, realtor, ano pa, agriculturist, magbubukid pa rin siya. And verse 27 tells us, she watches over her household. She is not idle. Maraming babae, they do a lot of watching. But they watch other people's households. Ang pinapanood, buhay ng may buhay, buhay ng kapit bahay, buhay ng iba. Pero ang babaeng ito, she watches over her household. She is not idle. 
And what do we see? She gets up early while it is still dark. Hindi nasisikatan ng araw sa higaan ng babaeng ito. And what does she do? She prepares for her family. So, these are the things that she does. And many more. Now, let's take a look at her relationships. The relationships of the virtuous woman. First of all, her relationship with God. Sabi sa verse 30, she fears the Lord. No wonder she could do these things. Because she first has a good relationship with God. Walang tao, babae man o lalaki, na magkakaroon ng mahusay na relasyon sa kapwa kung wala siyang relasyong maganda sa Diyos. At kadalasan, meron siyang mga pangit na relasyon sa kapwa kasi nauna nang pumangit ang relasyon niya sa Diyos. Kung hindi mabuti ang ating relasyon sa Diyos, imposibleng gumawa ng magandang relasyon with other people. So, she fears the Lord. What about her relationship with her husband? Sabi sa verse 11, her husband has full confidence in her. Ano-anong confidence yun? First of all, in her talent and in her skill. Hindi nagkakaubos-ubos yung budget. Dumadami pa. Kasi meron siyang sariling input, meron siyang sariling income. She watches over the house, and while she's doing that, she's weaving, she's doing things, she's selling things. So, nadadagdagan pa yung pera, hindi siya hingi ng hingi sa asawa ng pera, dahil marunong siyang gumawa ng pera. So, the husband has full confidence in her business sense. Hindi yung pagka meron siyang gagawing desisyon, eh, siya muna'y tinetest, siya pinapaikot-ikot, dahil proven and tested na mahusay. Tulad ng majority ng mga Pilipina. Ang galing sa negosyo. In most great business houses in this country, it is really the matriarchs that are the brains. From the biggest corporations, like the Ayala is run by a matriarch, or to the little sari-sari store, ang gagaling ng mga babae. So the husband has full confidence in her, in her talent, in her skill, in her judgment, which one to buy, which not to buy. Mahusay. And above that, the husband has great confidence in her character. That because she fears God, her husband knows that this wife will never sell his honor short. So, may confidence ang asawa. Hindi nagmamanman, hindi naniniktik, hindi nalunubok, hindi nagsiselos, hindi na insecure, kasi he has full confidence in her. Because she has earned that confidence. Napatunayan niya over her track record that she could be trusted. And because of that, sabi sa verse 12, she brings him good, not harm. Nakakabuti sa lalaking yun na ang babaeng itong napangasawa. Magaling na siya, nadagdagan pa ang galing. May dangal na, nadagdagan pa dahil sa idinagdag ng asawa. Hindi yung kaprasong, kaprasitong, pagkaliit-liit na monumentong na ito yun ng lalaki, sinira pa ng babae na hindi mapagkakatiwalaan. So she brings him good and not harm. And as a consequence, in verse 23, her husband is respected at the city gate. Yung city gate kasi yun ang lugar where business transactions were done in full view of everybody. So lahat ng mga pinag-uusapan, lahat ng mga kasunduan doon ginagawa. And of course, only the respected men sit there to sit as witnesses, to sit as observers, to sit as participants in great transactions. And because this woman is virtuous, her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. Ang dami talagang naidadagdag ng isang babae o maibabawas sa standing ng kanyang asawa. At ano pa, sabi sa verse 28, because of this, her husband calls her blessed and praises her. Gano karami sa inyo ang may asawa na mga sisters? May isira? Sino mga married? Wave it. Bakit parang ikilakahiyan nyo? Hmm. Yeah, good. Thank you. Natawag na ba kayo ng asawa niyong blessed? Halimbawa, ang pangalan mo yung Matilde. Sabi niya, blessed Matilde. Halika nga dito. 
Natawag na ba kayong blessed? <laughs> and behind your back, He praises you. Pagkasama niya ang mga kaibigan niyang lalaki, mga classmate niya ng elementary, napupuri. Napakaraming mga lalaki nagpupunta sa beer garden, nagpupunta sa mga lasingan, pagka ang kausap nila ang kanilang mga kaibigan lalaki o yung mga hostess, ang inihihinga nila, ang problema nila sa kanilang asawa. So pag pinag-uusapan nila yung kanilang asawa, hindi puri ang lumalabas sa kanilang bibig, mga hinaing. But this woman, her husband calls her blessed. So grabe naman my wife, blessed and a blessing. No? And he praises her. So that is the relationship with her husband. Hindi siya tinatawag ng, Hoy, bato ka, gising na! Hindi siya tinatawag na babaeng tamad, o babaeng burara, o babaeng bulagsak. Ang tawag sa kanya, blessed. A nice woman. And then what about the relationship with her children and the whole family? Verse 15 tells us, she provides food for them. She nagpo-provide ng pagkain, and I like to think, a good variety and in good quantity. Maraming mga babae, they are working outside the home, pero napapabayaan din yung mga domestic concerns. Kumisan may nagtatanong sa mga women, nagtatrabaho ho ba kayo? Abay, syempre! May babae bang hindi nagtatrabaho? Araw-araw, minuminuto. Ngayon, kaan tanong mo, am I employed elsewhere and receive salary? Baka hindi. Pero nagtatrabaho ang lahat ng ginang. Hindi lahat nasusuelduhan. So, hindi dapat tinatanong kung nagtatrabaho. Dahil talaga nagtatrabaho. Ang point is, yung nagtatrabaho sa labas, sumusweldo, yung nasa loob ng bahay, hindi underrated. Tapos sabihin, ito hindi nagtatrabaho. Ibig sabihin, hindi financially employed. But this woman, she provides food for her household. Hindi dahilan na siya'y nagtatrabaho, na siya'y kumikita, na siya'y busy, na hindi na niya naasikaso ang pagkain. Naasikaso niya. Marami mga kababaihan, busy sa church. Kaya tuloy yung unbelieving husband and children, isinusumpa yung church, at isinusumpa yung Diyos, dahil yung ginang, lagi na lang nasa church, pero pag sumando ka, walang sinaing, walang ulam, nothing, tapos kawag ng kawag sa church, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sino ba naman matutuwa sa ganyang babae? So kung busy ka sa church, gusto mo maglingkod sa Diyos, tiyakin na hindi napipintasan ng Diyos at yung church because you do your part at home. Hindi piriming nakababad sa church, tapos sa bahay, nakababad lahat ng maruming damit. At nilulumot-lumot na. So she provides food for them. And the children rise and call her blessed. Can you imagine? How many of you have children? Sige wala. Natawag na ba kayong blessed? Ano kaya ang tinatawag ng mga anak nyo pagka ang kausap nila mga classmates? Ito na yung nanay kong nagger. Ito na yung nanay kong ganito o ganyan. Pero sabi, alam mo ang nanay ko, she's really blessed. Wow! Daig niya yung mga award na ka pa ng Mother of the Year ng kung ano-anong mga leagues. The children rise and call her blessed. Why? Because they rise and there's food on the table. The household is in order. Hindi nagkakagulo, nagmamadali, nagpapanik ang lahat. How can they say, my mother is blessed? And what else? Verse 18, her lamp does not go out at night. The house has ample provisions. You know, the Jewish people have a very peculiar love affair with light. Unang-una, ina-equate nila ang darkness with the presence of the evil one. Of course, this is their superstition. Meron din silang ganyan eh. Hindi naman kung mobilit nila, ina-endorsa ng Bible. Okay? But they have this cultural thing about darkness. And when it is dark, they equate it with the presence of the evil one or the absence of God. So, no self-respecting woman would allow her na house to grow dark at night. Laging merong lamp that is burning all throughout the night. Ngayon, yung mga hindi organized na mga babae, Alas dos ng umaga, alas tres, namamatay na yung ilaw. Walang oil. And they also have to keep this lamp burning because they didn't have matches. So pag mag-aapoy ng kalan o gagawa ng kahit anong apoy, kailangan may pagkukunan ng apoy na nag-aapoy. 
Kaya kailangan yung lamp na yun all throughout the night and day actually, eh kailangan hindi yun maubos. Pag naubusan ka nun, kakato ka sa mga kapitbahay mo, manghihiram ka ng ilaw, manghihiram ka ng apoy, o hihiram ka ng baga. Kaya yung sinasabi that he will heap up burning coals upon your head. Actually, hindi naman gano'n ka-negative yun. Kasi sinusunong yung mga clay na lalagyan, manghihingi ka ng baga sa kapitbahay para may maiwi kang pampaumpisa ng apoy mo sa bahay. But that is another story. And there's another thing that a house that has a lamp burning, especially near the window where the light can diffuse through the window and be seen somehow outside, it is a house that is open to guests, to foreigners who may stumble into the village or the town in the dead of the night. So kung meron kang ilaw sa tabi ng iyong bintana at lumalabas sa siwang nun yung iyong mga liwanag, sinasabi mo dun sa mga biyaherong gabi ng dumating, wala namang mga hotel, walang titirhana, pwede kang kumatok sa aming bahay and you will have lodging for the night. Ganito kagaling ang babaeng pinag-uusapan natin, her lamp does not go out at night. Hindi siya nauubusan ng kukuhanan ng pamparikit ng apoy, hindi dumidilim ang kanyang bahay, at hindi siya nagkakait ng hospitality even to strangers. Such a woman. And what else? Her family, according to verse 21, is clothed in scarlet when it snows. Scarlet pa ang suot nila. Very special. Pagkatagulan ng niebe. Pag umuulan na ng yelo, gumigilaw ang panahon, aba ang mga anak niya, ang kanyang asawa, chains wardrobe. They wear very nice winter clothes, wool, and scarlet. So that's what she provides for her house. And what about her relationship with her servants? She gives them portions early in the morning. Either portions of food, etong mga pagkain ninyo, etong pagkain mo, etong pagkain mo throughout the day, and also portions of work. Etong gagawin mo, etong gagawin mo, etong gagawin niya. In other words, this woman doesn't do everything herself. But she's a manager. And she has servants. Pero alam niyo ba na ang babaeng hindi marunong magtrabaho, kahit paligiran mo ng sampung katulong, hindi rin siya marunong mag-delegate. Hindi rin niya maaayos ang sambahaya niya kahit isang katerbang katulong niya. Kasi kailangan organized ka mag-isip. Itong gagawin mo, itong gagawin mo. Ito ang kailangang ilagay mo na wax dyan sa floor, hindi maradong marami, hindi kulang, magaling. So, she gives portion to her servants. She is also a great manager. What about her relationship with people outside the home? The needy. Nakita na natin sa verse 18 that her lamp does not go out at night. So she provides hospitality to strangers. And verse 20 tells us, she helps the needy. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. Hindi lang niya mahal ang sarili niyang anak. Normal yun. Kahit ang mga masasamang babae, mahal nila ang anak nila. Pero mahal din niya yung anak ng ibang nanay. Mahal din niya yung anak ng may anak sa bandaron. Mahal din niya yung walang magulang. Mahal din niya yung mga kawawa. Napakadali para sa atin na mag-uwi ng magagandang bagay sa ating anak. Normal lang yun. Even sinners do that. But to be above the sinners, to be like Jesus, you also love children who are not your own. So kung kayo ay employer, hindi lang kayo ang malaki ang kinikita, tapos yung mga empleyado nyo, konting-konti lang ang kinikita, enough to keep them alive so that you will not run out of slaves. But you also give them good portions of your income and profit so that they too, like you are nice to your children, can be nice to their children. Napakahusay ng ganitong ugali to help the needy. Habang dinadamitan niya ng magagarang mga damit ang kanyang mga anak at mga comfortable clothes, nagbibigay din siya sa mga kapuspalad. What else? What is her relationship with herself? She is disciplined. She knows time management and she gets up while it is still dark. Kung bakit nga meron yatang kakaibang kababalaghan yung pagising ng maaga, parang every minute that is spent planning and thinking habang maaga pa is worth about 30 minutes pagtanghali na. Sa konting oras na nag-iisip ka, pag maaga pa, marami kang nagagawa kaysa gigising kang tanghali, kapos ang oras mo kahit anong mangyari. And you are playing catch-up all throughout the day. So she is disciplined. 
She gets up while it's still dark. And of course, hindi naman siya siguro heroic na kulang sa tulog. Dahil di matagal lang siyang namatay agad. Dahil maaga siyang matulog. Hindi siya nagsasayang ng panahon na manood ng walang katuturang mga daiyakan at mga drama hanggang gabi. Hindi siya nagsasayang ng oras ng kachichismis o kawawori o kakung ano-ano. Siyempre, nakakagising ka ng maaga kasi maaga ka matulog. Abnormal ka naman kung ang aga-aga mo nang matulog, tanghali ka pang magigising. Siyempre, pag puno na yung tulog, magigising ka na. Kaya sinasabi, mabuting natutulog ng maaga. Hindi ka pa nagkakasala. Maraming kasalanan ang nagagawa pag gabi. Kaya mga young people, matulog kayong maaga-aga, mapapalapit-lapit kayo sa langit. Yung natutulog ng hating gabi, no? kung saan-saan nang pupuntahan ang mga hating gabi, hindi malayo sa panganib. Kaya itong wise and virtuous woman is implied to be sleeping early. Because you cannot last a lifetime waking up early if you didn't sleep early. So she is disciplined. And what about her relationship also with herself? She is well-dressed. Did you notice? Pustoryosa ang babaeng ito. A delight to see. Maganda ang coordinated color ng kanyang mga suot. She wears fine linen. Ano sabi sa verse 22? She makes covering for her bed. Pati ang kama niya may magandang baro. Hindi yung kama na pag-ubupo kami na upang kong kawale, plancha, hanger, sapatos. She makes covering for her bed. And she is clothed in fine linen and purple. Not just anything fine linen and purple. At hindi siya nahihiya na magbihis ang maganda, hindi siya nagigilty, at hindi siya dapat magilty. Tutal, kinikita niya yon. Nagtatrabaho siyang mabuti, at marunong di siya magbigay sa nangangailangan. She runs her household well, hindi lang siya. Ang nakakahiya yung ang ganda-ganda ng nanay pag nakita mo yung anak mukhang basahan. Kabaho-baho, pagkatapos yung nanay, ang ganda-ganda, ang bango-bango, yun ang nakakahiya. Pero kung ikaw is a sight of beauty, and everybody else in your family and even your servants are dressed because you paid them well and everybody who comes into your house is fed woman of substance you've got to know how to enjoy God's blessings hindi puro paro pagtitiis nakikita natin tong virtue na ito ng woman na ina-extol she's not embarrassed to look good we should all look good we should celebrate God's goodness but not to be selfish and not to be focused only on self. But the greatest crime you can commit is not to love yourself. How can you love the world when you don't love yourself? Iba naman yung love of self na sinasabi sa Bible na in the end times, there will, people will be lovers of self. Iba yun. Yun yung napaka-excessive worship of self. So, she was well-dressed and even her bed had nice coverings. And it's very interesting that we are told that she is clothed in strength and dignity. To be clothed in dignity. Ano yun? May mga tao, hindi sila pwedeng makita sa publiko ng may mga rollers yung ulo. Hindi sila pwedeng makita sa publiko ng hindi kompleto ang kilay. Iba, isa lang. Hindi sila magpapakita. Kailangan dalawa. No? O kaya hindi sila magpapakita ng sabukot ng hair o kulang ng makeup or whatever. So kailangan may bihis sila. No? Pero kahit bihis na bihis, nalilimutan na bihis ng pagkatao. Dahil oras na nagbuka ng bibig, pag nagsalita, walang dignity. Walang babaeng chismosa na may dignity kahit ang ganda-ganda ng itsura niya. Kahit designer clothes pa yan, kahit na suot mo na yung the finest things. Pag bumuka ang iyong bibig, at wala ka lang katoy-latoy kausap, at wala kang katalay-talino, at pagkatapos pintasera ka pa sa kapwa, chismosa ka, actually you are clothed in shame. And this woman is clothed with dignity. Outside, she is clothed well. And inside, her character is also her finest ornamentation. Why? Because you will know a person by what comes out of his or her mouth. Nagtataka lang ako sa mga employer. Kung gusto nilang makilala yung kanilang mga employees-to-be, kukuhanin yung school records, School records are not always guarantees kung nangopya lang ba yun o napatsamba. Pero nakakatulong din. 
O kaya titingnan yung employment record, o titingnan yung kung ano-anong na-attenda na seminar. Pwede ka namang umaten ng 100% attendance so wala ka rin natutunan. Right? For me, if you want to know the person, pakinggan mo siya magsalita. At makikilala mo siya. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Anong favorite niyang topic? If I were an interviewer, I'd, may ini-interview ako, hindi ko siya pagtatatanungin. Sasabihin ko lang, I have 10 minutes, tell me about anything that you want to tell me. And the person will blubber and blubber and blubber and blubber about things. And you will, ah, oh, ito man pala siya, nakilala ko siya. Tell me about your cousin. Tell me about your brother. And you will see if the person is ingitero. You will see if the person is what? Mahiling mag-criticize. Kung yung tao ay obsessed with love of self. You will see. Kahit nga ang suot mo lang, ibinili mo sa baklaran. Malinis naman. At pag bumukang yung bibig, kahit wala kang accent ng kolehiyala, Misa nga mga accent na kolehiyala, hindi mo na maintindihan magsalita, nilalaman mo na yung letra, kaartehan. Ayaw na ibuka ang bibig, yun know, ang yun know, yun, ayaw ang itin, ibuka-buka mga ang bibig mo. But the point is, when people open their mouths, they reveal their character. And it is important. And she is clothed with such good character. So the woman that we're talking about is clothed not just with Material clothes and jewelry, but with character, with wisdom and instruction. Instruction is on her mouth. I have counseled so many young people, and most of the time, when you diagnose why they are such a horrible mess, they never receive good instruction from the home, especially when they were young. Sinabi naman ni Lord, train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. So parents, don't be warriors about what your children will do in the future. When they are still young, train them in the way they should go. Train them in the Bible. Train them in godliness. And the Bible said, when they are old, they will not depart from it. So why will you worry? But do your thing in the right time. In verse 26, she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Such is a woman. Nabuhay kaya ang babaeng ito sa balat ng lupa? No, she was not a person. She is what every woman should be. Inilagay kaya yan sa Biblia para lang inggitin ang mga babae at sabihin, this is what you can never become? O inilagay yan dyan para masabing, this is what you should be, this is doable. Of course, hindi lahat ng babae nakakapag-weave at nakakapag-burda at nakakapag-trading. But go beyond the details and go to the universal application of the verse and the verses. Meaning that a woman of substance is a woman who knows how to produce good things. So kung nagbe kayo ng puto, o kaya ay nagtitinda kayo ng tupperware, o kaya ay meron kayong tindahan ng dibingka, Yun yun. The detail is not what we want, but the spirit behind it. The, the Bible describes a woman of substance as a woman who knows how to produce good things. Out of little, she can make it much because she is productive. Ngayon, kung kayo'y babae nasa bahay at wala namang kapital para magnegosyo at wala kayong mga negosyo, you can also be a very productive woman simply by conserving resources. Because there are two ways to increase your wealth. One is to make it, and the other one is not to waste what is there already. So yun lang, hindi tayo maaksaya, hindi utang ng utang ng may mga malaking interes, yung marunong ka mag-budget, live within your means, walang excesses, walang wastage, that is also the same meaning of a productive woman. So if you're very conservative about many things, you are not wasteful, then you are an asset to the family. So it is achievable. What else? That she is a woman of instruction. That she knows how to teach. And she spends time teaching her children. And she guards over her husband's dignity and honor. It is doable. Your husband may not be sitting by the city gates. Mga equivalent siyempre niyan ngayon, ano, country club, board meetings, whatever. But your husband will always meet with some people. He will always sit with some people. 
And when he does that, make sure that he's got honor and dignity because of who you are. So it is doable. All of these assets, all of these virtues. You don't need to wake up while it is still dark if you are really very organized. But the idea here is when everybody else wakes up, the house is in order. If you wake up at 7 or 6 because you have already prepared before, the night before, then that's all right. You don't violate the substance. The substance is not in needless sacrifice, but in being organized. And you can be good to people. Kahit kulang yung ating resources, and I tell you, mga anak ng Diyos, hindi kulang yan. Pag sa palagay nyo kulang, it's only in your mind. Baka you are spending more than what is necessary, or kulang ng management, pero alam ko, sinabi sa Bible, ang mga anak ng Diyos, hindi maghihirap. So kung naghihirap, either palo yan, or trial yan, or nami-mismanage natin yung resources. Or hindi natin na ma-maximize yung possibilities. Or hindi tayo contento. Pero, if we fear the Lord, we will feel rich. Because even our appetites will be under the control of the Spirit. And that we also learn to be happy with what we have. Wealth is not how much you have. It is how much you enjoy what you have. So that people who probably have just average incomes are wealthier than many people who are billionaires. If those billionaires are not happy with what they have, they are poor and needy. It is not how much you have. It is how much you enjoy what you have. And godly people can make much out of little. Napakahalaga. Anong relevance ito? Men, you should inspire your women folk to be the best persons they can be. Na kung gumigising man maagat ng sasangag, ganado't kumakanta, hindi ipinagsasanga ka, pero galit na galit si sinasangag. Kakain na, matumbatugan na itong asawa ko, ganyan. Pero ginagawa rin, well, kailangan gawin. Children also, inspire your mothers in their sacrifices. Hindi yung hindi na sila na-appreciate, hindi na sila napapansin, may sa tuloy, tinatamad na. Siyempre, iba naman yung merong appreciation. Iba naman yung you make yourself easier to love and to serve because it becomes easier for them to do great things. So meron ding role ang mga men in turning out women of excellence, women of substance, and women of virtue by being an inspiration and by being supportive. Ano naman ang buburdahan nun kung tela lang hindi nyo mauwian? Kaya kailangan din yung mga husbands. You should be good providers. Within your limits and within how God gifts you with talent and with skill. Pero kailangan iniisip lagi. Iuwi nang iuwi lahat ng mga blessings sa mga asawa. Hindi yung pagka may blessing kung sino sino blow out, kung sino sino mga ginagastahan, tapos huwag lang problema, pag walang pera, sabi sa asawa, gawa kang paraan. Mami, gumawa kang paraan. O kaya mo pala ako tinatawag na mami, ha? Balak mo maging anak kong panganay buong buhay. Kala ko asawa kita, panganay na anak pala. So kailangan, inspire the women to become their best. And also children, help your mothers so they can be the best. So as you can see, it is a family effort. It is hard to be excellent when you are surrounded by mediocrity. So, kailangan nagtutulungan. What can the men do to inspire their women folk? To be the women of Proverbs 31. Dapat mag-isip. Yan ay kahit sister nyo, o nanay nyo, wife nyo, meron tayong pananagutan. And the children. Can you imagine? You call your mother blessed. Women, do not despair. If you think, nung binabasa natin kanina, parang hindi yata ako yan. Si Darna yata yan eh. Parang superwoman yata yan. No. The Bible is not about supermen and superwomen. The Bible is about average men and women like you and me. 
and a super God. And because God is super, we can all be super. At gusto kong bigyan ng diin, describe dito ang babaeng ito. Hindi para ipamukha sa kababaihan ang kakulangan nila at ang hindi nila mararating. Kundi para ipakita sa kanila kung ano sila dapat. I don't think that the Bible was written to even flaunt what people and what the readers can never become. But to inspire them. And I'm telling you this, women. Don't be like this virtuous woman. Be this virtuous woman. Huwag niyo lang siyang kopyahin. Maging buhay siya sa inyo. Pag meron tayong kulang, we know who to run to. Philippians 1.6 Being confident of this, that He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Yes, the Lord can complete it. Spiritual, emotional, social development of everybody can be completed. Ang sinabi ng Lord, be perfect, for I am perfect. Yun yung perfect woman, no? Ang utos niya, be perfect. And of course, to be perfect is not to be 100% morally right. Or perfection doesn't mean absence of error. But it means an ongoing and consistent development to be more and more like Jesus with every passing day. That is what perfect means. And because that's what it means, we can be perfect. We can be more and more and more like Jesus. Remember, the woman is not super. Her God is super. And the foundation of everything, she fears the Lord. Brothers and sisters, when you fear God, you have no one else to fear. And you have nothing else to fear. But if you don't fear God, you have everyone else and everything else to fear, including God Himself. Because we will come to judgment. Let us reflect on this. Let's bow our heads before the Lord. And I want every woman here to think, what kind of a woman am I? I may not be a mother, but I'm still a woman. What kind of a woman am I? And what kind of a woman am I becoming with each day that passes? And what kind of woman will face Jesus on the day of Jesus? Because it must be brought to completion on the day of the Lord. The important thing is to be more and more like Him with this day that passes. And every man that is with us today, what is your role in making the women in your life become like this woman? Or what is your role in stopping them from becoming like this woman? Ano ba ang tamang ginagawa natin? Anong hindi tama? At sa bawat anak na narito, kay babae o lalaki ang anak, anong ginagawa ninyo para yung nanay ninyo maging ganitong klaseng babae? O baka kayo nalang lagi ang umuubos ang kanyang pasensya? Na imbes lumabas yung magandang words from her mouth eh na bibigla na tulad kung ano-anong nasasabi? Lahat tayo may pananagotan sa isa't isa. Be alone with the Lord. Let the Spirit minister to you. I want you to pray. And if your wife or mother is here, pray for her. If she's not here, pray for her too. And then make a firm resolve to be helpful. The word of the Lord is not just a decoration. It's there to be obeyed. The models are there to be followed. So in silence, let the Holy Spirit minister to each one of us so we can have happier homes, happier communities, happier country, a happier church when we have women of excellence. Be alone with God for a while.